Okay, so we're going to swap codes. In the last video we just did, we looked at the World Club Challenge uh, at the end of February between Wigan and Penrith. We're going to swap codes, we're going to look at the Six Nations and Rugby Union. Now, the World Cup did throw up a few surprises for us. Uh, Portugal were the outstanding second-tier European team scoring their first ever win uh, at a World Cup. They played better than Georgia did. They really showed how expansive they were and they adapted to the, uh, the changes and rules really, really well. They got a very strong sevens programme. So let's look at the, the big nations in Europe. We're going to start with Italy, because they got the wooden spoon last year. Um, they're not going to win the Six Nations, but they're going to throw up some surprises with the way they play, which is very, very similar to Portugal. They like to get wide early. They've got pace, and they are a youthful team, so they play with no fear. They've got no fear of anyone. Yes, they, got, they took a thumping from the All Blacks in the World Cup, but apart from that, they were very, very good value for money. Um, in the World Cup. They really play with a lot of expansiveness. Uh, they threw the ball around and they were willing to run it rather than kick it, which is refreshing. Uh, we, we see a lot of kick tennis a lot of the time. They're more willing to run the ball. And they've got options um, with fly half and inside centre kicking options. Capuzzo is one of the best fullbacks in Europe. Um, he is so quick on his feet uh, and he can find gaps where other players will just truck it up into contact. He tries to find that gap uh, in a drift defence. So Italy are going to be expansive. They are going to be exciting. And they have got a very young, youthful, vibrant team. So they're going to they're gonna throw some surprises, I think, in this Six Nations. Do not underestimate them. People constantly write them off, but I think they, they're building towards something. They've got a great youth programme now, which is produ producing good, quality, talented players which in years past they weren't. They've now got a very good under-20 squad as well. So the talent production line has begun um, in, in, in Italy, in the Mediterranean. Uh, Scotland. Now, Scotland, much like Italy, did not get out the pool stage. The other European nations did in the Six Nations. Scotland, uh, again, very similar to Italy. They do like to play with pace. Uh, very, very quick at the breakdown, much like Italy. They had some of the quickest breakdown numbers uh, for speed of recycling of the ball. And they also like to get the ball wide quick and early. Now, of course, Stuart Hogg retired just before the World Cup, so they've lost Stuart Hogg from, from their, their setup, which I think is a bit of a loss. He's a key leader. Uh, he's moved on uh, just to, you know, he's retired. But li apart from that, they still showed their willingness to, to, to gain width early uh, and attack different points and change the point of attack at pace. The way to stop Scotland is to slow that breakdown down massively. South Africa proved you can do that. And of course, South Africa went on to win the World Cup. But Scotland, they like to play an expansive style. Um, there's a lot of chaos in their game, which is what Gregor Townsend wants. He wants the players to think on their feet and read the game a lot more. He gives a lot of uh, a lot of license to his players to do that. They're going to be fun to watch. I think Scotland have a very, very good chance of finishing higher up the Six Nations table this year than in previous years. But they've got to get that consistency together. Um, there were periods in in the World Cup with Ireland and South Africa did shut down that that speed of breakdown, made it very very difficult for Scotland to add the breakdown area, which slowed the ball down, which slows their attack down. They do thrive on quick balls, so defensive teams, they, the best way to beat Scotland is to slow the breakdown down significantly, either by committing bodies uh, or dominating the tackle areas. So that's going to be an interesting, interesting to see how Scotland uh, work around slower ruck ball and and slower play the ball speed. Uh, Wales. Now, obviously, Warren Gatland's back in charge. Uh, not much was expected before the World Cup. They, I think, exceeded expectations. However, player turnover is a key issue for Wales. Again, much like Scotland and Italy, a, a younger setup these days. Um, Wales, mixed bag at the World Cup. Um, there's a lot of issues off the field with Welsh rugby financially. And, of course, a huge player turnover of key players retiring from the international scene and rugby in general. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this much younger Welsh side with less international experience does play uh, um, in the Six Nations this coming year. But they're going to be exciting. Um, and it's a Warren Gatton side, so he will get the maximum out of the playing squad and the tools he has available. They have got some exciting young talents as well. I think an area where they could be weak is in the fly-half position, because they've lost that experience of Dan Bigger, for example. Now, Anscombe can play at fly-half. He's not Dan Bigger. Uh, but he's still a pretty competent fly-half and full-back option for them. Should he stay fit? He's had a lot of injury problems. They've got some other young fly halves coming through. But Reese Zamet is, is, of course, their star player. Um, he has such speed.
and agility. And he's also, for his size, he's very, very strong as well. He's very good defensively as well. Uh, we did see Wales employ the crossfield kick a lot um, to create uh, an overlap and create tries. They have they, they kick more than Scotland and Italy. Scotland and Italy want to keep the ball in hand. Wales will kick a bit more for, for tactical reasons and to create tries with crossfield kicks. So look at Wales to be a little bit more of a, a box of tricks as well as some structured play. They weren't as quick at the breakdown, however, so they want to speed that up because fast ball um, disorientates defences and with rule changes around the tackle area, um, that's going to lead to mistakes and sin binnings and potentially red cards. There's going to be that area, the tackle area and, and, and the breakdown. Um, the rule changes have Im impacted how that area of the game now plays out. So Wales, I don't know what to expect from Wales this time around. They're going to be a bit of a surprise. They could you know, win a Grand Slam or they could get a wooden spoon or somewhere in between. They're very difficult to predict because of that squad turnover. But Warren Gatland will get the maximum out of this team. The difference is this time around, Warren Gatland does not have Sean Edwards as his defence coach. And that did show in the World Cup at times. They did look a little bit less organised defensively. So that's something that I think he, will be, he would have been working on with the squad that he's going to select. Uh, England, I think they, they, they did surprise many with their World Cup performance getting to the semi-finals. I didn't expect that. Now, of course, Owen Farrell is not going to be there. And Vinopola, prop Vinopola, Mako, has retired. So there has again been some player turnover. Owen Farrell hasn't retired. He's just taking two years away from the test side. Whether he comes back as a test player, we don't know. Uh, key area to look at, obviously they've lost Arundel to, to France as well. We, we have to look at England's selection rules for players. The domestic game cannot sustain the amount uh, of of. of player salaries basically. England's domestic game, much like Wales, has money problems. We've seen three clubs go out of business in the last calendar year. So there are issues off the field again with England. However, on the field, it's going to be George Ford at fly half. I'm going to think Marcus Smith is going to be the fullback. Can also play fly half. That's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting who they place on the wings because Arundel is in France now, eligible for selection, and uh, May, uh, you know, Johnny May has retired. So the wing area is going to be interesting for selection there. George Ford is, I think, was had the better of the World Cups over Owen Farrell, personally. I think that Argentina game, he took control of a game that could have gone very, very badly wrong for England, personally. He he played an outsta he played a blinder. Those drop goals and the way he just took control of the game in difficult circumstances with a man down, back to the wall job, that was true leadership. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see how that Marcus Smith fullback experiment continues to work because he was challenged defensively by teams. They did target him defensively. He got bashed up in the World Cup. Took some. He didn't back down from uh, the physical aspect of the game. Is fullback his best position? Has Steve Borthwick decided that he's just going to go with him at fly half alongside George Ford and, 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 and chop and change there? Or is that going to be that partial spine? Uh, did they overachieve at the World Cup? Uh, they got the furthest out of the Six Nation teams, uh, making the semi-final. Um, was that a step too far for England? Did they overachieve? Does that mask some of the issues that the England setup has? Because Courtney Laws has, has gone, Owen Farrell's not available, Arundel's not available, Mako Vinopola's retired as well. So there's some key players who are now not going to be part of the squad. There's a lot of young players coming into this squad. Can they back up their World Cup performance or was that an overachievement? They just got on some momentum. We shall see. France, a bit of a disappointing exit from the World Cup, but that quarterfinal against New Zealand, that was a very close game. Could have gone either way. Obviously, we now know scrum half is a very key area for France. I mean, uh, Couliard was a very good uh, backup to Dupont. Lucu, not so much when given the main role as the starting nine. So if Dupont does have a few injury concerns... Couliard is the player I think they should go with uh, as that starting uh, scrum half should DuPont be un 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 unavailable for a game with that scrum half combination with Couliard coming off the bench perhaps. Uh, fly half Entomac should be back. He's the best fly half France have. That combination with DuPont is, is fantastic. It was a shame that he missed out on the World Cup because of injury. I think the French looking at their squad and the players they have available possibly have the strongest squad going into this Six Nations and they will want to bounce back from a disappointing exit uh, at their home World Cup where they didn't get as far as they would have hoped or wanted. Um, and, and if DuPont is fully fit, um, anything's possible. Uh, they have the speed, they have the, the, the physicality, they have the skill, they have the flair. Under Fabian Galtio, they've really 
he's getting the best out of a squad of players that for many, many years was misfiring and, and not playing a French way where they were too robotic, um, too focused on the power game, sucked the flair out of the game. That's now been reversed. They've now got that flair and they still have that power and they've got that flexibility. They are going to be frustrated and angry with their World Cup exit. They are, for me, the favourites because I don't think Ireland are um, in the same position without Johnny Sexton. So Ireland's the last team I'm going to focus on because they won last year's Six Nations. I don't think Ireland are the team, the same team without Sexton in the side. Now, yes, they've got, you know, young, inexperienced fly halves coming through at this level. They've been very good at provincial level in the URC, but they're not Johnny Sexton. It's, that, that's some big shoes to fill. And again, another quarter final exit for Ireland at a World Cup. But, I mean, they lost to South Africa, so that's, that's no shame in losing to the world champions um but it's going to be interesting how ireland adapt to the loss of sexton that, that's plain and simple that forward pack is still brilliant their outside backs are still fantastic and and have got great skill and power behind them bandiaki had an outstanding world cup um but that loss of sexton i think could be a big blow for them but Positive news, Andy Farrell has now been selected head coach to also coach the Lions in 2025. So he's been recognised as the, the best coach in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, I personally think uh, France are going to be the favourites. Ireland will still be there. Uh, they've got great systems in place. Andy Farrell's put some great systems in place. It is Ireland's now got a production line of talent that, let's say, in the 90s they didn't have. That in the, the late 2000s. 2010s onwards they've had now for a long time they are great at identifying uh, athletic talent getting them into uh, the system with the provinces and then getting them into the urc and ultimately the national side they've got a talent production line fantastic systems much like france uh, as well fantastic systems in place that are well established now i think these two sides i think for me are still the best teams when it comes to the six nations the world cup however states that england currently are the best team in europe i i think that may have papered over some cracks they just got on some momentum i think there's too much player turnover for england however they may unearth you know some great talent as well with all these young players coming through but France and Ireland have got more established, settled systems. The other four nations are in some kind of flux. Now, Gregor Townsend obviously been with Scotland for some time now. They have a style of play. Italy have their style of play, and they're now starting to produce that young talent. Uh, Wales and England, I'm not so sure where they're at. And I'm being honest with that. I'm not sure where England are at under Borthwick and Warren Gatland. While he's back in the fold at Wales, is that the solution uh, to the Welsh problems with with on and off field issues? Uh, considering that Sean Edwards is now France's defence coach, <laughs> and that was a key component of of Wales under Gatland previously was their defence. They won games back backed on their defence and good defensive kicks to gain territory. Uh, that's where they built bedrock of all that success under Warren Gatland over many many years and sometimes it wasn't the most attractive rugby to watch I will admit that um, but it was effective so we'll see how it all plays out for me France are favourites um, I think they've got the strongest squad um, if everyone's fully fit I think Ireland losing Sexton from from the setup it is a blow uh, can those young fly halves that are coming through uh, the Irish system can they they you know, fill the shoes and, and take the res a shared responsibility because I'm not sure who the starting fly halves are going to be in this coming Six Nations. I think by the end of the Six Nations, uh, Andy Farrell might have a better idea going into the, the summer tour uh, test matches, but we'll see how that plays out. England, did they overachieve in the World Cup? Does that pay for over some cracks that the English system has, including the club game having financial issues? Wales, very similar. Um, they were a bit stop-start. You could see there were some good things that Wales were doing. And there were some things that weren't as Welsh-like. And they've also got the issues off the field. Scotland, I think Scotland can be dangerous. Uh, they just got to get that consistency. If they win one game, they've got to back it up with another and another. They've got to be consistent in performances. They're still a little bit inconsistent, but their numbers, their, their actual stats, their analytics look really, really good. Just occasionally the results aren't there. Italy, they're just going to be fun to watch. Um, they're going to be dark horses for some upsets. They could finish mid-table in the Six Nations. Do not count Italy out for upsetting the apple cart. Um, you know, they might upset an island team that are off the boil they might upset a France team that gets over emotional and, and ill-disciplined you just don't know I think this is going to be a very open Six Nations I don't think there's going to be a grand slam in the Six Nations either I think this could be a very open one that could go down to points differential 
uh, for and against, that kind of thing. So we could see a very, very open, entertaining Six Nations. But there we go. Place your thoughts in the comment section below. I will have some more content for you very, very soon. And we are getting so close now to uh, monetization and therefore the ability to have memberships, super chats and live streams, and of course, a merchandise Teespring shelf. So we are getting closer to uh, the, the monetization goal and eventually hopefully we get ad revenue as well should we reach that goal later on in time but for me for now thank you very much for watching i'll have some more content for you very very soon